What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So obviously I haven't done a video in a while, but I decided, well, we got a new expansion coming at the end of June, so what better to start the YouTube back up than an expansion review? So this is obviously not gonna be all the cards when I'm recording this video. Uh, all the cards have not been released yet. We have a little bit more than a third of the cards revealed so far, so we're gonna go through those today. And I'll probably have one to two more videos following this uh, in the coming weeks as cards get revealed. So starting off, um, I want to say there are new keywords in this expansion. Um, I will explain them as we go. I have five cards at the beginning that will uh, display these keywords. So starting off, we have Master Mirror. This is a neutral card, six strength, 10 provisions, Veil. So Veil is one of our new keywords. Veil essentially makes a card that has Veil, so in this case, Master Mirror. Uh, you cannot give this unit a status, and that is both offensive and defensive statuses, so your opponent can't bleed it, you can't give it vitality, stuff like that. Uh, there's a new status called Rupture, which we'll get into right after this card. Uh, so essentially, no statuses can go onto cards with Veil. Now, the deploy effect is transform leftmost card in your hand into a random legendary card from your faction that was not in your starting deck. Repeat this ability whenever you play a rightmost card from your hand. So initially, when you play this card onto the board, ideally you're going to have a four provision card bronze in your leftmost part of your hand, and it'll transform it into a gold. Well, how good is that? Uh, it, it obviously depends on what legendary gold you get from the transformation effect. Um, if you're playing this and saying monsters, and you transform a four provision card into a spear tip, well, that's really good, right? Um, obviously, spear tip is not a card you typically play in your monster deck, so transforming a bronze into a 12 value card is insane. Now, there are obviously a lot of very, well, typically not very good uh, legendaries. Um, typically, they're very conditional, um, so this card's not gonna be absolutely insane. It is a fun card. Typically, every expansion, we have somewhat of a Mimi card, and, well, this fits the bill. Uh, I definitely look forward to playing this card. I don't think it's going to be a top-tier card by any means, but if you're looking for a little bit of randomness in your deck, uh, you can play this. Now, the second part of the ability, which allows you to keep going, is kind of cool. Uh, if you play it and the card you transform, it transforms into garbage and you hate it, well, you can just go again if you can play your rightmost card. Uh, and you can keep transforming until you get a good card that you like, and then voila, you can play that card, uh, and then start going on the uh, second leftmost card. Uh, granted, your opponent can just kill the card. It does have six strength, which means if your opponent has like a Parasite or a Giga, uh, they can just uh, outright kill the card. Uh, it does have Veil, so the, the one other scenario uh, where this potentially protects it is going to be Poison. Uh, you can't poison veil simply because well, poison is a status and then lock of course uh, you cannot lock a veil so yeah it's a cool card it's going to be fun to play uh there's definitely going to be some highlights uh, great dandelion show is going to love this card um but yeah cool card to start off the reviews next card i don't know how to pronounce this uh turgvi tersek we'll go with that i apologize for the mispronunciation this is an sk card 11 provisions five strength veteran veterans a new keyword well it's new to New Gwent. Uh, it's an old keyword that, keyword that we used to have back in the day. Veteran, um, every round after round one, your cards with Veteran get plus one strength. So if you were to play this in round one, five strength. Play this in round two, six strength. Play it in round three, seven strength. So plus one for every round, round three being plus two extra strength. So the later on into the game you play this card, the better it's going to be. Deploy given enemy rupture. Rupture is another keyword that we have. Uh, it is a status which I just mentioned a little earlier. And the status is you put it on an opponent's card, and at the end of their turn, uh, it explodes or whatever, uh, and it does damage to that card equal to its strength. So if you were to rupture a five strength unit uh, at the end of your opponent's turn, it'll do five damage and it'll kill it. Um, obviously armor does take into account. So if your opponent's five strength unit has two armor, you're not going to do as much damage, right? The two armor is going to mitigate two. Um, it is a status. This is very important, which means if you play this and you put it on, say a 14 strength Azrael, right? That's going to typically be your highest uh, amount of points you're going to get out of this. Uh, and they have a purify. Well, it goes away, right? No rupture value gone. So Rupture is kind of like a poison. 
in the sense that it kills a card. Granted, you only have to play Rupture once. You're not playing two poison effects. Uh, and it's similar to poison in that your opponent gets to react to the card, right? Similarly to how if you poison a unit, you can purify it uh, before they poison it again. In this case, you rupture a unit and your opponent can purify the rupture. So how good is this card? Um, let's say you play this in round three. It's a seven strength unit and you give a unit rupture. Well, if they purify the rupture 80-90% of the time, it's not great. Um, I would say if this was a Skoyatel card, it would be insane, simply because in Skoyatel, you're giving a lot of statuses, negative statuses to your opponent's cards, uh, typically poison. Um, and because you're giving a lot of poison to your opponent's cards, they're going to be wanting to purify those negative statuses. Well, this is a negative status in a faction that doesn't really play a lot of negative statuses. So SK, you have Raiding Fleet, which gives four bleed. Outside of that, you have like bears that give two bleed. Um, if this card becomes popular, people just hold on to their purify for the rupture effect so i don't know i don't know how powerful this card is if it's consistently going off this card's absolutely insane um so yeah it's just going to come down to how much purify is in the meta um yeah it's really hard to evaluate the cards just because it kind of depends on the meta and what people are running moving right along we have angry mob a nilfgaard card three Strength for provision, deploy damage an enemy unit by two. Conspiracy boosts off by two. Conspiracy is if you're targeting a spying card, do this. So if you target a Joaquim, for example, uh, you'll do the two damage and then you'll get the conspiracy bonus of boosting self by two. Is this good? Well, um, you'll 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 figure out later on into these reveals that CDPR is supporting the uh, the spy archetype. Spy spy Nilfgaard is coming back. Um, people have been wanting this for, well, since it disappeared. So, uh, I'm sure a lot of Nilfgaard players are going to be very excited for this. Uh, this card in particular, if you play this and target a, consp uh, a spy, you're going to be getting, what, 7 for 4? Is 7 for 4 good? Yeah, that's good. Granted, um, some of the spies, some of the bronze spies, uh, they're 1 strength. So, you're only going to be doing 1 damage to it. So, it's only a 6 for 4 in that case. But 6 for 4 is not bad. Um maybe you play Regis deck and you use this to line up like Joaquim into a two to set up Regis. I don't know. Uh, I think it's a good enough card to play in a spy deck. Uh, it's good value. If you're not playing spy Nilfgaard, you're probably not going to play this. But if you're playing spy Nilfgaard, yeah, I see no reason not to play this. Moving along, we have Young Dryad. This is not a card. This is a token. Uh, if you notice in the bottom left, over there that you have that doom status uh they're just showing the keyword on this so this will get spawned from other cards uh two strength young dryad doomed symbiosis symbiosis um symbiosis is a new keyword and essentially the more symbiosis cards you have on the board the more powerful the effect so if you have one of these on the board and you play a nature card it'll strong it'll spawn a wandering tree and so the wandering tree and will be bigger for every symbiosis card you have on the board so uh, it is green strength so if you have i believe three symbiosis cards i'm actually not sure if it spawns a three or four i'm not sure if it's one plus however many symbiosis cards or if it's just uh two plus um i think it spawns strength equal to the amount so if you have three symbiosis cards you'll spawn a three strength treant uh boosted by two obviously the one plus two how powerful is this mechanic? Uh, yeah, we don't really know. Um, this is the only symbiosis card that we've seen. And it's not even a card. It's a token. So uh, insanely hard to figure out how uh, the power level of this type of mechanic. So this is the type of thing that we're just going to have to wait and see. Um, yeah, not much more to say about it. Um, you can't do crazy, like... 10 symbiosis cards spawn a really big tree and, and necromancy it which is kind of unfortunate because it is boosted not base strength so that's kind of unfortunate but hey eh, it's understandable um yeah so we got a new mechanic for squayta once again power level unknown moving on we have oak critters a new squayta card two strength uh four provisions deploy melee give an enemy unit bleeding three deploy range spawn a base copy of self in this row Devotion, new keyword, use both abilities. So um, if we don't look at Devotion here, it is a two that gives three bleed. So it's a five for four. That's counterable if they have Purify. That's really bad. Uh, range, spawn a base copy of self. So a four for four, really bad. So what is Devotion? Well, essentially Devotion is 
a new keyword for all factions, and it is basically if you're not playing any neutral cards in your deck. So if you're playing this card in Squiatel, um, the idea is the Devotion ability goes off if you're only playing Squiatel cards. Uh, if you're playing a Northern Realms card with Devotion, you need to have only Northern Realms cards in your deck, or put more simply, no neutrals. Um, this is going to lead to some pretty interesting developments with uh, the neutrals, which we'll see in just a second. Um, but the idea is you're playing a full Squiatel deck, only Squiatel cards, no neutrals, and you get both abilities. If both abilities good, well, you get the 2 plus 3, you're looking at a 7 for 4. Is a 7 for 4 good? Yep, that's really good. Um, you might think, well, that's power creep, that's crazy. Uh, it is power creep, but it kind of has to be. Um, the reason for this, you'll, you'll notice very quickly, is if you're playing a deck with devotion cards in it, it means you're not playing neutrals. And if you're not playing neutrals, you're not playing tech cards. So the biggest tech card that's seen most play in most decks is Bomb Heaver. Uh, Bomb Heaver is obviously used to deny high value scenarios. Well, if you're playing a devotion deck, no Bomb Heaver, it means your opponent's scenarios are always going to go off. So there's obviously a trade-off. You get more powerful cards, but you can't play tech cards, um, which will also lead to more powerful neutrals, which you'll see in just a second. Uh, neutrals in this expansion are going to be more powerful than neutrals in past expansions simply because, well, they can be. Because if you're playing these neutrals, uh, it means you're, you're not going to be utilizing the devotion. So Oak Critters, very strong card if you're playing a devotion deck. Obviously, you're not going to play it if you're not playing a devotion deck. Um, I believe it is a Treant. Treant is a very useful tag. We don't have a lot of Treants uh, in Squirtle at the moment. I don't think we have any Bronze Treants other than uh, the Treant token that we just looked at a bit earlier. So very good for proccing Harmony. I think this card is going to see a lot of play. Um, Squirtle, for the most part, plays mostly Squirtle uh, cards in their deck with the exception of Bomb Heaver. So Bomb Heaver... It's going to have to get cut from the deck. And if you're playing a lot of poison, you're typically playing Morale. So those two cards are going to have to get cut from your deck. Um, is it worth it to do that? To run Oak Critters? Uh, we'll see. So, yeah. Uh, devotion cards have to be good. If Devotion cards aren't power creeping uh, existing cards in their respective provision slots, then there's no reason to play Devotion. So, yeah. Devotion cards are going to be OP in comparison to other cards in the similar provisions. Uh, and our last new uh, keyword for this expansion is Echo. So we have Oniromancy here. It is a neutral card, 12 provision special. Echo, play any card from your deck. Play any card from your deck. Uh, we haven't seen a card like this before. So before I get into what Echo means, um, play any card from your deck. So normally we play cards like Royal Decree. Royal Decree is any unit from your deck. We play cards like Mata for consistency on our high end. Um, which can pull out scenarios. There's Avalox Age, which nobody plays, but you could technically play it to pull out scenario. Uh, and then you have 1K Fables if you really wanted to pull out specific specials. Um, so it's essentially those three cards combined. Um, any card from your deck. I can't stress this enough. That's insane. Uh, you need a special, you need soup from your deck. Boom. You need a high value radia. Boom. Uh, anything. You need scenario. Easy. Well, Echo... New mechanic. Essentially, when you play this card, it puts it into the graveyard, and at the beginning of your next round, it's going to shuffle it back into your hand, but it's going to be on top of your deck. So, example, you play this in round one, you pull out a card, it goes into your graveyard. The next round, before mulligans, this is going to go on top of your deck, and you will immediately draw it. So, what does that mean? Well, it kind of means you need to be playing this in round one or two to be getting full value. If you play this card in round three... You're not going to be playing it a second time. So you really, really need to be playing this in round one or two. Um, more so in round one, just because if you play this in round two, uh, yeah, you get the guaranteed top deck. But what if your opponent dry passes round two? Then, yeah. Uh, you're, yeah, you get to thin a card out of your deck. You get to thin maybe a bad bronze out of your deck. Um, that's fine. But yeah, the, the real power of this card is round one. Um, unless you win round one. Uh, if you win round one, playing this in round two is exceptional. If you're going for bleed, you get that uh, extra consistency on a card that's really going to help you bleed round two. Uh, and then you get the literal perfect top deck in round three because it plays anything from your deck. So yeah, if you win round one, fantastic round two play, fantastic round one play, terrible round three play. Um, 
it's not strictly a worse royal decree in round three simply because it can pull anything um but yeah 12 provisions is a lot of provisions uh going from 10 to 12 with royal decree into this card essentially means you're downgrading like a seven provision gold down to a five will this card see play um yes it will see play uh radia shoop decks are definitely going to play this card this adds a lot of consistency you no longer have to play mata um the downside of this card is it's not going to see as much play as you think simply because well back to the previous card the previous mechanic devotion devotion no neutrals this is a neutral so if you want to play this card it means you're not playing the devotion keyword in your deck so is it worth to play this card and not run any devotions we'll have to see and this is right back to devotion cards need to be strong if devotion cards aren't strong no one's going to play Devotion, and you're just going to keep running neutral cards. So time will tell. We'll have to see. Is this card good? Yes, I expect this card is going to see a good chunk of play. Uh, this is a lot of consistency. If you play this card plus Mata, the odds of you not drawing the majority of your golds is very low. At worst case scenario, you can Mata this if it is your highest provision card into your, in your deck. So those are going to be our keywords. So our next card is Ethereal. This is a neutral card. Eight provisions, four strength doomed at the end of your turn transform a non-demon unit to the right into a base copy of self i really like this card i think it's great uh it's similar to i believe it's called kiki warrior um it's the syndicate monster split card that's three strength four provisions uh and you destroy a unit and spawn another three and you get to keep doing that it's essentially that except it immediately goes off so if you have i don't know a one strength unit on the board and you play this to the left of it when you pass it'll transform the rightmost card that one strength token or whatever into a copy of itself now this keeps going so your opponent essentially has to remove two fours in one turn how easy is it to remove two fours in one turn yeah that's not happening um outside of using a leader as well as a card from hand uh you're basically not going to be able to deal with this now how scary is this card well you're pushing a lot of fours onto a row so it plays into gigney lambert's obviously a card if you transform your entire board into a bunch of ethereals and your opponent plays lambert you're gonna lose um you could definitely keep this going you can even move it so after the first instant goes off it, it's not over right it's not a one-time effect so if you play this to the left of a one strength unit and it transforms uh, and you have more units to the right of that and then you play like I don't know, Bruver or something, or some other movement card like a Dragoon or a Strays of Spala, and you pull it to the range row, you can essentially have this continue going in both rows at the same time. So that's really cool. Uh, I really like the card. Uh, it would be pretty scary if you could uh, increase the strength of this, if you could somehow transform the base copy and make it bigger. Um, really cool with Gurney, right? You play this, you play the uh, one strength fruit to the right of it, you transform it, and you get to continue doing that every round. So that's kind of cool. Um, it's a cool card. I like it. I don't think it's super broken because there are neutrals that counter this pretty easily, like Lambert. Um, but yeah, I look forward to playing the card. It's going to be fun. Very neat card. Moving on, we have Marlene, another neutral. Six strength, six provision, Veil. Veil, once again, you cannot target this unit with statuses, bleed, poison, vitality, um, order, give a unit veil. So it's similar to Lady of the Lake. Instead of a shield, you're giving it veil. How good is this card? <coughs> Excuse me. How good is this card? I don't know. So it's somewhat similar to a purify in that if your opponent gives you, like, gives one of your tall unit a, uh, a poison status, you can veil it and that'll prevent future poison statuses. I would like to note, it doesn't completely negate it. Your opponent veil is a status. So if your opponent really wanted to kill that unit, they could play their own purify, purify the veil and the poison off, and then give two more ticks of poison onto a unit. Granted, that's a, a lot of commitment, but they could do it if they really needed to. Um, so we'll see. It is not deploy. So you would have to play this proactively ahead of time if you're anticipating a lot of poison. Maybe you could play a deck with a ton of Veil cards that give each other Veil so that your opponent can never use any negative statuses. I don't think that's very good, but we'll see. This card seems kind of underwhelming. I don't think it'll see too much play. Uh, six for six nowadays is meh. It's okay. Uh, nothing great. Giving a unit Veil. We'll see. Um, this does not deny Rupture. 
well, it can deny rupture. So if you play this card and then you play, say, like an Azrael and then give it Veil, it'll prevent rupture because your opponent will not be able to target the rupture status onto the Veiled unit. But you have to do it proactively and you need to do it ahead of time. So, yeah, we'll see. It's an interesting card. Um, maybe it'll see some play. Um it is a unit, not an ally, so I suppose you could give it to your opponent's card to play around. Maybe they have a final card in hand that gives a bunch of vitality to a unit, so you could play this to deny it. Um, you could play this, give a unit Veil, and then Vincent it, I suppose. Vincent is, if they have a status, this is a status. Um, it, it's just a lot less flexible than Purify, obviously, right? You can't use it to Purify your opponent's defender, um, you have to use this ahead of time. It, it's just, it's a hard card to utilize. I'm not sold on it, but you never know. Moving along, we have Siegfried. Another neutral card. Seven provisions, five strength. Deploy, purify all units. Every single unit. Uh, Nilfgaard has a card similar to this, which purifies all cards on a row. This is just all units on the board. The end. It's mass purify. Uh, cards pretty crazy. Um, obviously, if your opponent puts like multiple poisons and spreads them out, this card's insane. Uh, if your opponent plays a defender and you play this, it's like a purify. It's a little worse, obviously, but it's not terrible. The main use of this card is going to be to enable uh, super powerful cards uh, later into the game. Uh, cards like this are going to be like monsters, so you're going to swarm really wide, spawn a bunch of tokens. You're going to play this. You're going to undo all the cards. Why is this important? Because you have a card like Morton Tart, which is for every unit in your graveyard, uh, increase the boost by plus one. Well, if you purify eight units on your side of the board, that's plus extra eight boosts in the future. That's kind of neat. Uh, Beast SK plays a lot of beasts that are doomed from uh, Token Swarm uh, to Bear Abominations from Totem. So you can spawn lots of doomed beasts. Play this. You can even play Jermaine. Uh, play Jermaine. Play this. Undoom all the doomed cards. And then you have a really big uh, Flaminica later on into the game. So, yeah. I think in a Beast SK, car uh, Beast SK deck, this card's actually really, really good. Uh, I would be very surprised if you didn't run this. This card is phenomenal. I mean, you even play Gramis just to purify like one or two beasts. This does it on an insane level. Great card for Beast SK. Um, more in Tart deck. Kind of a meme. But if you are going to play it, you definitely include this. Will you tech this into your deck for other reasons? Maybe. It's really good against uh, Detlaf monsters with bleed. Uh, obviously, a lot of the times they save their leader towards the end of the game. Uh, and then they spawn like triple bleed and then play something like Orianna. Uh, so you have four bleeds on the board. You play this. You wipe out all of them. Insane value. So against that deck, this card is just going to absolutely annihilate your opponent. So definitely has potential to be insane and kind of a core card in some other decks very good card um you're gonna see this card from time to time for sure next card we have squirrel uh another neutral card four provisions four strength deploy banish a card from the opponent's graveyard wow uh we have this card in nilf guard except now it's a neutral so yeah that card sees play from time to time we have a neutral banish effect that's not lemons is this card good uh, well, we see Sarah's decks pop up with Lippy from time to time. Uh, it's obviously good against Monster on Ergen. Ergen? I don't know how to say that. Gurn. Um, you're going to save roughly like three value on it. And they'll have to go off on Goliath instead. So it's going to be a seven point play effectively. Is this card good? Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, if you need to interact with your opponent's graveyard, this is a pretty good card. I'd also like to note... Uh, this works with the new mechanic Echo. So once again, Echo, when you play an Echo card, it puts it into your graveyard, and then at the beginning of your next uh, uh, round, it'll put it on top of your deck. Well, if your opponent plays, uh, say, Oniromancy, Onirom Oniromancy, and you play Squirrel and you banish it, well, they're not going to top deck that card anymore because it's not in the graveyard to shuffle. So if Echo is seeing a lot of play in the meta... Uh, you could potentially run Squirrel and deny that second uh, effect on Echo. So that's pretty good. Um, once again, it is a neutral. So it means you're not playing any Devotion in your deck. So you have to keep that in mind. Is this a strong effect? Yes, it is. Is it going to be auto-include? Obviously not because it is a neutral. 
Will it see some play? I definitely think it'll see some play. Good card. Next card, we have Pact. It is not a gold. For some reason, there is a gold border around it. It is a bronze. Uh, it is obviously not an epic. Four provisions, Pact. Boost a unit by six and give it doomed. Uh, initially, people looked at this card and went, wow, this card's not very good. Uh, this card's insane. Um, this card's very strong. I don't think it's going to single-handedly push like an archetype or anything, but it is a good card. We have a card, uh, Froth right now, which is four provisions, boost three units by two, three adjacent units by two. That card sees play a lot. This card is the same thing. Doesn't require you to have three units, only one. Uh, yes, it does go tall, but you typically don't care. And giving it doomed is actually not that bad. So right now in a Lippy Sarah's SK deck, um, you, you play a bunch of cards, and then in round two or round three, you're going to play Lippy, and you're going to shuffle your deck back into your... You're going to flip-flop your graveyard in your deck. Well, if you packed a card that you don't want to draw later on, you give it Doom so that when it enters the graveyard, it disappears. So let's say you play, I don't know, a Bear Master in round one with a Lippy SK deck. Uh, you typically don't want to draw that in round three or in round two when you after you Lippy. So... If you packed it, not only do you get the six for four, but you literally cannot draw it later on in the game after you play Lippy. That's pretty good. Um, obviously, if your opponent like Gremis it or purifies it, that would not be the case, but they're typically not going to do that. So yeah, it's really not that bad. Um, six for four, just good. Gord decks love this card. Uh, you might see this in Squayatel because, well, it's a special and it's a six for four and it's very easy to play. Um, yeah, it's not an amazing, incredible card, but it is by no means a bad card. This card definitely will see play. Um, yeah, I, I like the option of going tall instead of wide. Uh, I'm glad this card exists. Cool card. I like it. Moving on, we have another neutral 4 for 4 um, provision strength. Fortune Teller, deploy melee, give doom to a unit, melee, give veil to a unit. So... Uh, I believe the second one should be deploy ranged, give veil to a unit. Otherwise, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, so they, they should be split. So you get to choose to give a unit doomed or give veil to a unit. Veil, once again, makes it so that neither player can put statuses on that card. So if your opponent poisons one of your large units, you could play fortune teller, give that unit veil, and then they cannot put that second tick of poison, thus protecting the card from poison. Is this card good? Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, once again, neutral means you're not playing Devotion. Um, giving a unit doomed is actually pretty good. Uh, we just talked about it in a Sarah's Lippy deck where you're using it on your cards to uh, make your future top decks or just draws in general better. But you can use this offensively as well. So if your opponent plays Sarah's, for example, and you play Fortune Tell on your Sarah's, your opponent's Sarah's, well, when the round ends and the card disappears, it disappears. It doesn't go into the graveyard. It's just gone uh so when they play lippy they're not going to have a sarah's again unless of course they purify that sarah's uh before the round ends so yeah you can kind of use it as like a future proactive squirrel um which is not bad at all typically cards like a uh, squirrel or the nilfgaard equivalent they're not incredible simply because you are playing a four strength unit in a round that you're potentially getting blood so it's kind of scary uh whereas this you can play it ahead of time so if you're already banking on losing the round well you don't really mind playing a four strength uh unit just because uh, you're not winning the round anyway so you can play this on something uh like sarah's on roach on snickers on anything in one of those uh, sk cards that are going to get replayed twice you can play it against monsters to prevent Azrael. So, yeah, I think it'll see it. It might see some play. Uh, it is four provisions, which means in the case of um, Poison, it is a better Purify. Peller is the neutral Purify right now. And it is five provisions. This is four provision. Granted, you do not have the flexibility of doing offensive Purify on cards like Defenders. So you lose some flexibility, but it is cheaper. And you have the additional flexibility of being able to give Doomed to monster and sk matchups which is relevant in some cases so yeah it's not a bad card um these neutral cards that we're going over they're not really fillers all of these will see play at some point in time uh once again i mentioned this a little earlier neutral cards are better than they previously have been simply because of the new keyword devotion so yep moving on we have will of the wish i know i just said that the neutral cards are good um 
This is probably the one exception. This card's... Um, it's bad. Uh, Will of the Wisps, neutral card, five provision, special, destroy a doomed unit. Cool. So you could play Fortune Teller, which is the card we just went over. You could give a unit doomed, and then you could play Will of the Wisps. So it's kind of like a neutral poison package. Um, the difference being is there are fewer cards that work with it. There's no, like, morale. I, I guess you could play Gaunter. But the, the problem with it is the ordering, the sequencing in which you are doing this really matters. So with poison, it's just poison, poison. Really simple, right? You just need to play two poison. Whereas this, you have to give it doomed first and play Will of the Wisp after, right? You can't play Will of the Wisps first and then, right? So yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Um, the problem is, well, what happens if you don't draw a card that gives doom. This is a literal zero value card. Uh, if your opponent spawns a token, like a two strength token, yeah, you can doom it, sure. Uh, I suppose it's good on Savola's Frightener. Uh, if they play that card, you get an 11 strength execute with this. It also works on renew, renew. When you renew something, it makes it doomed. Uh, it also works with Freya. When you Freya something, it gives it doomed. So maybe great swords are seeing a lot of play with freya and this is like an execute on a great sword but the problem is what if you hold it and they don't do it it's zero value so the like it has a high ceiling a high potential ceiling but the floor could be a zero and a zero point floor on a card especially a five provision card that, that's the other thing if this card was four provision maybe you could play it five provision no you're not playing this card um, unless you're, like, double including two fortune tellers and, I don't know, maybe they print, uh, give all units on the board doomed and then all of a sudden this card's good. Uh, so, yeah, this card could be good if they print a lot of cards that give doomed. I suppose there is packed, but you typically don't want to boost your opponent's card by plus six. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty bad card in my opinion, but you never know. Just like Poison way back in the day was pretty bad. Uh, poison got better once they started introducing more poison cards. So, yeah, this card could be good if they start introducing more cards that give doom. Uh, but from what we've seen, it seems very underwhelming. Our next card, we have Offering. Another neutral card, special, six provisions. Damage a unit by one death blow. Play a bronze unit from your graveyard and give it doomed. Um, it's kind of like a Freya that's neutral. You could argue that it's better than Freya because you get the damage uh, by one. Granted... If you don't kill the unit, uh, it is a 1 for 6, which is obviously terrible. Uh, there's some cool things you can do with this. If you're playing Garnacora, you can spawn your fruit and then play Offering on it and then spawn, like, your uh, Andrega... Or, sorry. Yeah, you could spawn your Larva, which we all know is an insane bronze card. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a neutral Freya that requires some setup. Obviously, if you have a bunch of damage in your deck, you could... Do it on your opponent's side of the board and damage one of your opponent's one. Um, will this card see play? Yeah, maybe. Uh, it's I, I guess the best comparison would be Necromancy. Necromancy is seven provision gold. Uh, resurrect a bronze unit from your graveyard. Yeah, we'll see. Um, maybe you could play this in a Spy Nilfgaard deck. Spies uh, are typically one strength when you put it on your si opponent's side of the board. So Offering plays right into that. So yeah. Maybe it works in a spy deck. Um, I think it'll see some play here and there. Uh, it doesn't blow me away by any means. But yeah, it's not a terrible card. There are definitely ways to set it up. Eh, it's kind of neat. Next card we have... Well, I'll explain. It's Usurper Officer. So every faction is getting this transforming card. Uh, it is a legendary card that you put into your deck. Uh, and every round it progressively gets better. So in round one, it's obviously going to be at its worst. In round two, it gets a little better. And then in round three, it's at its best. Um, I would like to note the way you transform these cards is very simple. Um, as you can see at the start of the round, while in hand or deck, transform. So you literally just have to have this card somewhere and it'll transform. Um, the second transformation from round two to round three, which we'll go over in a second, uh, it is devotion. So once again, back to that devotion, you do have to only be playing cards from that faction. So if you want that third final level up uh, for these transforming cards, you're going to have to be playing a devotion deck. So let's get right into it. Usurper Officer, this is Nilfgaard, six uh, strength. 
11 provisions to play. Spawn an operative in the opposite row. Zeal order. Seize all enemy operative at the start of round while in hand or deck transform. So when you play this card in round one, uh, you're going to spawn a operative. Operative is this card right here. It is a three strength doomed unit. Uh, when you play this card, you're going to spawn the operative in your opponent's side of the board. And whenever you want, you can click on Usurper and you can pull it back. Uh, so essentially, if you play this card uh, in round one and you click it immediately, you're going to be getting 9 for 11. Is 9 for 11 good? No, it's not. Um, this card, you do not want to play in round one. Almost ever. The only time you're ever going to play this in round one is if you get hard blood in round one and winning round one is of the utmost importance. In which case, I suppose you can play this card in round one. But typically, and this is going to go for most of the transform cards, they're typically underwhelming in round one. Um, and they typically, in round two, they're playable. And in round three, they're at their best. So do you want to play this in round one? No. Now, the second level up of this card, Usurper General, when you play this in round two, spawn an operative in the opposite row. Um... Zeal order sees all enemy operatives. If I think the wording on this is wrong, um, I believe it spawns two. It's one in each row. Um, yeah, I believe. Yeah, it should be two. Uh, I think the wording's off a little. So it should spawn two operatives on your opponent's side of the board, one in each row. And then when you click on the zeal, you get both of them back, which is essentially a six and then negative six, a zero point play. But then when you click it, you get the six back. So it's a 12 point play, 12 for 11. Is 12 for 11 good? Uh, yeah, that's that's actually really good. Uh, if you've played Nilfgaard, you know their finishers outside of uh, Masquerade Ball. Not great. You have Damien and Stefan, but it's conditioned on your opponent not removing them. So yeah, this is just a nice point slam card, 12 for 11. Um, there's more spy synergy, which we'll get into, but uh, even in a non-spying deck, this card is just good. Yeah, it's a 12 for 11. Uh, it's a nice point play. Uh, I would imagine this card sees play in most decks, and this is even if you're not running Devotion. So as you can see, at the end of it, Devotion at the start of the round, while in hand or deck, transform. So you need to only be playing neutral, or sorry, only be playing Nilfgaard card cards if you want this to transform into the final form which we will go over right now. I will say the art on this is messed up. Um, the way they showed us the card was kind of screwy. So it, this is what it'll look like in game. Um, so I apologize for the formatting. Usurper, Emperor, Human Soldier, Veil. So can't be targeted by statuses. Deploy spawn an operative in each enemy row. Zeal, Order, sees. So this, the spawn an operative in each enemy row is what it should say on the previous card. Zeal, Order, sees all operative. Whenever you play an agent, boost self by one so the difference between this one and this one is the veil obviously which might come into use uh and then obviously whenever you play an agent boost self by one so it's kind of an engine that can't get poison which is kind of neat how many agents are you going to be playing in your deck i don't know masquerade ball actually spawns some agents the uh the four strength poisons are agents um there are some other agents that you can be playing in your deck so yeah, it obviously does get better in the third evolution, but it's not significant to the point where you have to play a Devotion deck for this. You will be perfectly happy playing Usurper General in round two or in round three as a 12 for 11. That's phenomenal. You're never going to be sad about that, right? Obviously, if it does transform, it is going to be a little better. So if you are playing a spy deck, the best version of this is going to be in round three. But you really do not mind playing this in round two. Is this card going to see play? Yes, this card's going to see a lot of play. Um, once again, you don't have to play Devotion. The first level up in round two is good enough that it'll see play in just about every Nilfgaard deck. So yeah, I look forward to playing this card. Our next card, we're going to start going over some of the uh, synergistical spy cards. I believe the wording on this is kind of weird as well in that the devotion, uh, there's some typos. I believe the devotion is supposed to be on the second portion of the wording, but I I'm not 100% sure. So five provisions, three strength, sedacious aristocrats deploy devotion, boost self by one for every spying enemy unit. 
whenever an enemy unit gains spying, it boosts self by one. So this is similar to a card we had a long time ago in beta, um, Brigade, which was one of the giant spy engines that you'd play towards the end of the game. It'd be like an 18 strength unit. Um, this is that, essentially. Uh, obviously, if you're playing this card, you're going to want to play Devotion. Um, you don't have to. If the Devotion's on the second part, which I believe it is, um, if you play this at the end of a round, after you've played all your spying cards, it'll be fantastic. It'll be just as good as if you didn't have the Devotion. Um, but if you have Devotion, it means you can play it early on and then continue to get value as the game progresses. Uh, is this card good? Well, um, five for five, six for five, seven for five, seven for five is typically what you're looking for, for a good bronze card. Uh, so you have to have four spying units for this card to break that seven for five or equalize on it. Is that hard to do? Well, it depends on how many spies you can play. Uh, the usurper cards, which we just went over, they do count as spies, right? So if you have this on the board and you play usurper and you spawn two spies, that's an immediate plus two on this. Um, I think this card's great. It's going to be a core card in any kind of Spy Nilfgaard deck. Uh, if you're playing Spy Nilfgaard deck and you're and you're not running this card, you're crazy. Um, yeah, that's all there is to it. If you're playing Spy Nilfgaard, you play this card. The end. Our next card, we have Mage Infiltrator. So we're getting a new Spy Bronze for Nilfgaard. Uh, one Strength, four Provisions, Disloyal. So you put it on your opponent's side of the board. Deploy damage adjacent units by three. So with zero other synergy on the board, like Engines, Enforcers, the... Uh, Sedacious Aristocrat that we just went over. You play this as a negative one damaging for six. So you're playing this as a five for four. Obviously, you're going to want to play this in a spy deck that can utilize getting extra value whenever you play spy cards. So in a spy deck, this card's good. Uh, it's four provisions, very easy to fit into the deck. If your opponent plays larvas and they're playing monsters uh, and you play this, you get to kill both larvas if they don't have a unit in between. So yeah, it's not bad. Uh, if you're playing a spy nilf guard deck, you play this card. Um, yep, uh, Vigo is a card that has seen play in Spy Nilfgaard decks when people have tried to play, uh, ambitiously play Spy Nilfgaard. Um, the beauty of this is if you play this plus Emissary and then, I, what is it, Sly Seductress? The five provision, one strength, uh, copy of bronze on your opponent's side of the board. If you play those three cards and then, say, two other bronzes in your deck, maybe Enforcer and Sedacious Aristocrat, if you run those five bronzes in your deck... Uh, you're guaranteed to always hit at least one spy uh, with Vigo, which is pretty good. Um, typically, Vigo into a spy is a lot of value. You get the uh, assimilate value, and you're creating a one, which is already a one, which is fantastic. So, yeah, if you're playing Spy Nilfgaard, you play this card. The end. Um, possibly. Maybe it doesn't make the cut, but if you're playing a spy deck, you want to play spies. This is the spy. So... I would imagine you're playing this card. Moving along, we have Coup de Glace. This is an Echo card for Nilfgaard. 10 provisions, legendary. Damage an enemy unit by two. Death blow, spawn and play a base copy of it. Conspiracy, once again, if you're targeting a spying unit, uh, always trigger the death blow ability. So we have a card similar to this already. Um, for neutral, it's Gaith Sword, Hen Gaith Sword. Uh, the nine provision artifact that damages a unit by two. Death blow, you get to play that card. Uh, this is similar, except if you're targeting a spy, well, it goes off no matter what. So if you, for example, target Joaquim at four strength, you're going to immediately uh, do the two damage to the unit and then spawn a Joaquim and go again, which obviously playing more spies in a spy Nilfgaard deck is good. Who would have thought? Uh, not to mention it's Echo. So you play this in round one, you get to play it again in round two or round three, you play it in round two or round three. Um... It is also a tactic, which is insane. Uh, the fact that this is a tactic is ludicrous. It means, um, what we talked about this with Oniromancy, essentially you need to be playing Echo cards in round one or round two. Uh, if you play it in round three, it's obviously much worse. Well, if you can tutor the card consistent consistently with a card like Menno, um, the consistency levels just went up. So if you can consistently play this in round one, which you can if you're playing this plus Menno, um, you will usually be playing two copies of this. Now, if there are no spies on your opponent's side of the board and you play this card, it is a two. Two for ten, really bad, obviously. If only there was a way 
to give your opponent's card spying so that you could utilize this more frequently. Oh, wait. Um, yep, Fergus. This is a Nilfgaard card. I believe the correct number is 6 for 7, not 7 for 7. Um, so a bit of a typo there. 6 strength, 7 provisions. Fergus, deploy given enemy unit spying. Wow. Um, and then devotion if you're only playing Nilfgaard cards. Okay, no neutral card. Give adjacent units spying as well. So you can give up to three units spying. Is that good? Uh, well, sedacious aristocrats get plus one for every spying unit. Uh, if you put three extra spying, well, that's plus three on both of your, or one of your sedacious aristocrats, or both if you have both on the board. Is that good? Yeah, obviously. Uh, if you're playing a spy elf guard deck, you're playing this card. Um, it's that simple. Not to mention it has insane value with uh, coup de grace. Uh, you can push it onto, I don't know, a Goliath or something, and then you get to play this, and you spawn a Goliath. That's pretty good, I would say. So, obviously, it's going to be an auto-include in any and every Spy Nilf card deck. Yep, phenomenal card. Next card, we have Mage Torturer. Uh, Veil, so you can't target this with statuses. Assimilate. So every time you play a card that's not in your original deck, uh, spawning cards with cards like Vigo, also Proxis, and then deploy. Give an enemy unit spying. Oh, look at that. Wow. Um, yeah, so similar to Fergus, you are giving your opponent's cards spying, which you can utilize with Curie Gras. Uh, obviously, your engines that utilize spying also benefit from this. Um, is this card good? I would assume so. It's similar to our Purify Nilfgaard card um, in that it has Assimilate. Giving a unit spying is going to be very useful in a deck. The only reason this card wouldn't see play is if the bronze package was really tight in Spy Nilfgaard and this didn't make the cut uh, and you didn't need to give uh, a lot of cards spying. So what I mean by that is you have a coup de grace, but let's say you play one of the copies on Joaquim and then the other copy in conjunction with Fergus. That's all you need. So maybe you don't need this. Um, I think it's a good card in a spy deck, but I could see a scenario where it doesn't see play simply because the list is tight and it doesn't make the cut. Um, but it's definitely a playable card. Uh, our next card is Brothens. This is another Nilfgaard card. Uh, it obviously helps with the spy package. Four strength, 11 provisions, assimilate. Uh, deploy, create, and play a Bronze Disloyal Nilfgaard unit. So that's going to be a Spy. You have Emissary. You have the Sly Seductress. And then you have the um, card that we went over a little earlier, which damages adjacent units by three. And any other future Spying Bronzes that they decide to print in the future. Um, it's similar to Vigo in that you're picking from a pool. Granted, if there's only three Spying Bronzes, well... There's no randomness. You get exactly what you want. Uh, if they increase the spy pool by one or more, obviously a degree of RNG is going to come into play. Uh, but as of now, since we're looking at this card right now, uh, there's no RNG. Create and play a Bronze Disloyal Nilfgaard unit. Uh, so when you play this, you're immediately going to go to five strength because you're going to be creating a card that wasn't originally in your deck. Uh, is this card good? Uh, well, Emissary, I believe, is five provisions, one strength, boost a unit by seven, if I recall correctly. So it's a plus six on your side of the board. So if you play this into Emissary and you have zero spy synergy on the board and you just boost this by seven, uh, you get the plus seven, minus one, and then plus one. You're looking at an 11 for 11. Is 11 for 11 good? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's good. Um, we talked about this a little earlier with, um, the new Usurper card, very simply. Nilfgaard doesn't really have a lot of high-value cards at the, like, 10-plus provision threshold. Um, this fills that. This plus M here, honestly, might... Or, sorry, Usurper might just see play in every Nilfgaard deck just because it's a good standalone card. Um, not to mention, if you have other create um, cards in your deck, you can utilize the Assimilate. And flexibility. Flexibility is not something to scoff at. Being able to get that just point slam emissary value or maybe you need to kill some larva on the board. Maybe your opponent plays a really potent bronze engine and you want to copy it. Uh, there's a lot of different cases where you would want to use each of the different uh, spies. So flexibility, insane. Uh, 
this is a phenomenal card. Initially, it looks kind of bad, but even with zero spy synergy in your deck, I think this card's great. Obviously, if you can utilize the spy effects, it just becomes that much better. I think this card is phenomenal, and I love the art on this. Great card. It's going to see a ton of play. Our next card, Amnesty. Uh, probably the most broken card printed. Granted, I will say ahead of time, since they released this card within like 24 hours, they nerfed it to six provisions, and rightfully so. The card is absolutely insane. Uh, this is a bronze Nilfgaard card. Five provisions. Sees an enemy unit with three power or less. That's insane. Uh, <laughs> Yoink effects are very, very powerful in this game. Uh, it's very similar to Sweers, uh, Enslave, Muzzle, Philippa. Yoinking cards and being able to utilize that card for your own is just insane. Um, Reddit like went bananas when this card was released, and normally Reddit can uh, <laughs> over hype or whatever. Um, I think they were right. I think this card absolutely broken. Very simple way of testing if a card is too good is add plus one provision to a bronze card. Is the card still good? Uh, yeah, this card is still good at six provision, which means it's absolutely broken at five provision. I didn't even finish reading the card. Uh, conspiracy. So if you're targeting a spy, boost it by two. Devotion. Always trigger conspiracy. So uh, if you're targeting a spy... It's typically not going to be as good simply because a lot of the spy cards that you're going to be playing have one strength, maybe two strength. Uh, three, I don't think we have any three strength spies, so you would have to play like a one strength spy and then play like a Nilfgaardian Knight boosted by two and then yoink it. Um, so yeah, if you're playing this card, you want to be playing Devotion. Um, is this card good in a Devotion deck at six provisions, which is what it is right now? Um, well, it's an eight for six, and you get to potentially utilize the card that you yoink. Is that good? I should also mention, yes, it is a tactic, so you can tutor this. Uh, it counts for Enslave. Uh, is this card good? Yeah, it's good. If you can play Devotion Nilfgaard, this card is auto-include. Now, it is very important. Uh, Nilfgaard, unlike Squayatel, doesn't necessarily want to play Devotion. So, unlike Squayatel, Squayatel can play a full Squayatel deck. They'll be fine with that. Nilfgaard, a lot of the times when you're playing an enslaved deck, you're playing cards like Royal Decree and Marching Orders because they're tactics and they're high value. Well, you can't really play those cards in the Devotion deck, so you're going to have to cut those cards. So can you play a Nilfgaard deck with no neutrals? I don't know. If you can, you're obviously going to play this card. Um, if you can't, can you still play this card? Yeah, it's a 6 for 6. Is that good? Uh, it's okay. It is conditional. Uh, if you've played Swears, you know that every now and then there isn't a three to yoink. So yeah, if you're playing Devotion, fantastic card, auto include. Um, if you're not playing a Devotion deck, probably skip it. Fantastic card. Uh, once again, this card is six provisions, not five. Our next card is Jacques. This is the Syndicate Transform card. The base uh, version, which is this one right here. 11 provisions, 6 strength, profit 4, tribute 4, spawn 2 fire sworn zealots in this row, the start of your round, uh, while in hand or deck transform. So, if you play this in round 1, uh, fire sworn zealots, if you remember, are 2 strength um, tokens. So, if you play this, you play the profit, you use the tribute, uh, you get a 6 and 2 twos. You get a 10 for 11. Is 10 for 11 good? Eh, not great. Uh, it's not terrible. It's better than the usurper one, which is 9 for 11. This is 10 for 11, so a little better. Um, do you want to play this in round one? Uh, typically you want to play it in not round one, um, but it's not terrible to play in round one. So, all right. So the initial, not bad. The level up is six strength, 11 provisions, profit four, tribute four, spawn two flaming rose footmen in this row. Uh, so the difference between the previous to this is instead of two fire sworn zealots, you're getting two flaming rose. Well, what are flaming rose? Uh, it's this unit right here. It's a three strength unit with one armor. So you're essentially getting plus one on the fire sworn. Is that good? Well, you're getting two threes and a six point body. You're getting a 12 for 11. Is 12 for 11 good? Yep, that is good. We went over this with the usurper. If you're playing a 12 for 11, you're pretty happy. Uh, it's over three bodies. You don't have to use the tribute. So you have that flexibility. Maybe you need the for profit for some other card that you're going to play. Um, so yeah, 
it's just a good value card after round one. Once again, Devotion to get the final tick, which we'll go into right now uh, in one sec right here. Grand Master, 6 for 11. Once again, Veil, similar to Usurper Tribute for Spawn 2 Flaming Rose Footman. So that's the same. And then you have this additional ability. Whenever you play a Fire Sworn card, boost self by one. Um, boosting an already six isn't terrible because it has Veil, which means your opponent can't poison, so that's pretty good. Um, is this considerably better than the previous version? Well, the difference is it has Veil, and you get plus one for every Firesworn card. How many Firesworn cards are you playing in your deck? I don't know. Uh, it is a proactive card, so it is a pretty decent engine at that. Um, yeah, so once again, it seems like we're seeing a pattern here, which is first version of it in round one is pretty mediocre. Round two is good it breaks even it's a good card it's proactive and in round three it's essentially the same thing it has veil and it also has this added plus one ability where you're getting extra value if you're playing similar cards that utilize uh the the engine aspect so yeah it's not a bad card i once again would be surprised if you don't play this in syndicate um with louisa and salvola kind of rotating out of syndicate decks this card fits right in there um and once again you do not have to play Devotion. So you do always get the initial transform. So if you notice the difference between this, the bottom text, and this, one has Devotion and the other doesn't. So you will always get the first transformation, whether or not you're playing Devotion. Uh, but the second transformation in round three, you do need to be playing a Devotion deck, which means no neutral cards. So is it worth going all out, no neutrals for this upgrade? Um, I would say no. Uh, for this upgrade alone, if this was the only card in your deck that had the word Devotion on it, I do not think it's worth it. Uh, it's a few extra points. The Veil keyword, a lot of the times, isn't going to be too valuable in round three. So I would not say it is worth skewing your deck. Unless, of course, you're not playing any neutrals in the first place. And Syndicate actually doesn't play very many neutrals. Or any neutrals, for that matter, for some of the decks. So for Syndicate, this is not going to be hard to pull off. The Nilfgaard one is going to be hard to pull off just because they do like playing neutrals. So we'll have to see. It depends on how good Devotion is. If we have four Devotion cards, let's say, and other than the Transforming card, the other three are really, really good and you have to play them, then yeah, maybe it's worth going Devotion. So yes, we shall see. Moving on, we have Cleric of the Flaming Rose. This is a Syndicate card. Five Provisions, four Strength, Profit, two. Tribute to spawn a Fire Sworn Zealot on this row. So if you play this, you play the Prophet, you get an immediate two value. Uh, you're looking at a six for five. If you want to go ahead and spend, uh, you get a Fire Sworn Zealot, which is a two strength unit. So it says six for five once again. And then fee one, transform a Fire Sworn Zealot into a Flaming Rose. Once again, the Flaming Rose Footman is three strength, one armor. So if you have an extra coin and you want to spend the fee, you get to level up a two to a three. Is that bad? Nope. It's just added flexibility in terms of spending. It's a six for five. That's not terrible. Now, is the six for five good? Uh, for Syndicate, typically, no. Typically, you want seven for five. Uh, bronzes and Syndicate are usually very tight. Will this make the cut? Maybe. Maybe. The reason I say maybe is because, well, similar to the uh, transform transforming gold that we just looked at, um, we're, we're, we're seeing some token spawning. Well, is spawning a bunch of units on the board good? Well, <laughs> if you play Bone Talisman and you boost all 18 units on your board by plus one, it's pretty good. So, yeah, I wouldn't write this card off simply because maybe we get a Swarm Archetype and Syndicate. Uh, if Swarm Archetype doesn't exist or nobody plays Swarm Archetype and Syndicate, I don't think this card will see a lot of play. If a Swarm Archetype does exist in Syndicate, this card I definitely think we'll see play. Next card, we have Smuggle, another Syndicate card. Five Provisions, uh, Profit 3, spawn a Flaming Rose Footman in an Allied Row. Is this card good? You're spawning a 3 and you're getting 3 Profit. It's proactive. It's a 6 for 5. It's okay. It's all right. Um, 6 for 5. Sure. Uh, if you're playing... I don't know, maybe you're playing a Swarm deck and you need some extra coins to utilize and this gives you those extra coins that you can use and you get the added benefit of this being proactive and spawning a unit, then it's pretty good. 
maybe this makes a cut in a, a swarm deck uh, if you do know, need those extra three profit. Um, it's also pretty good in Gord Syndicate. If you've played Gord Syndicate, you know three coins is a, a very important threshold. You can use those three coins to transform Wholesome uh, or the Piggy because both of those need three coins to activate. So yeah, you could play this card. Um, we already see, I believe it's Dip in the Pontar, which is damage a unit by three and then get three profit. Uh, this is better because, well, it's proactive. You get to play it if you're going first and you get to set up for those three point spenders in the future. So yeah, I think this card's actually decent. Uh, I do think it'll see play in Gort Syndicate decks. Uh, will it see play in other decks? We'll see. And our last card, this card was revealed a little earlier on, but I wanted to finish off with this card because I, I, I really do like the card. Uh, since the initial reveal, it has been changed. It is now 10 provisions, which is awesome. I'm really happy about that. It is four strength, 10 provisions, all God. Deploy boost three units in your deck by two. So we've actually seen this card a long time ago. Uh, Northern Realms had this with Dandelion. You got to boost cards in your deck. Um, it is a neutral, which means no devotion. Um, is this card good? Well, there's, there's a lot to talk about, actually. So uh, when you play this card, it is low tempo, right? You're playing this at a four, and you're making your future draws better. But there's flexibility there. So if you're playing a card like Roach, for example, in your deck, uh, and you need that extra tempo swing, uh, when you're playing this card, you can put the extra two onto Roach and immediately pull out a five. You get a nine for 10 on play, and you get to make your future card better. It's not terrible. Uh, you could play it with cards that you would normally tutor. So if you're playing Squirtle and you're playing Cucumbers, okay, they're not called Cucumber, Sentinels with uh, Ethne, you could boost them both by two so that later on when you play your leader, instead of pulling out two twos, you're now pulling out two fours. Uh, you can play this in Hand Buff Scoia'tael. Uh, this is probably what I'm most excited for. Hand Buff Scoia'tael used to be a really, really fun archetype uh, back in Old Gwent uh, where you would buff cards. The current iteration of Handbuff Squirtle is pretty bad. Uh, we've seen Handbuff cards like Ithlin, Sursa. Um, one of the problems with Handbuff cards is typically when you buff a card in your hand, a lot of the times you have to end up playing that buffed card that round. Why is this bad? Uh, you're typically having to pay for that carryover mechanic uh, by one to two provisions. Uh, this makes the card pretty bad if you have to end up playing the card that you buff that round. Uh, this prevents you from having to do that. It'll prevent your future card. Obviously, if you play this card and you buff three units into your deck and you don't draw those three units or you don't tutor those units out, it's really bad. You're playing a four for 10. So you have to be very deliberate with this card. You need to be playing it in a deck that can actually A, utilize the boost, but B, consistently pull those boosts out. Um, you might be able to play this in Northern Realms. There's um, a card that you play in Meave. It's uh, It used to be called I I Sir a long time ago. By provisions, three strength. When this card is boosted, summon the other onto the row. I, the wording, I don't believe it's exactly that, but it's similar to that. So there might be a chance where you get to play this card, buff those two units in your deck, and they come out. Now, will that work? I don't know. It just depends on how it's coded. Uh, that would be really cool. You could do those two cards plus Roach. You're pulling out three threes at nine plus the six plus the four. Uh, it, this is if you're including Roach. So you're looking at what? Uh, three, six, nine. You're looking at a 19 point play. You get to play a 19 point card over four bodies, then three cards out of your deck. That's kind of cool. Uh, I really hope that that's a thing. Um, that would be a very fun, proactive Northern Realms play. Is that OP? Maybe. Um, granted, you, you do have to be spending a good chunk of provisions on this. Um, and back to the, the this that was a side note. I'm really hoping that that combo works. I don't actually know if it does. Um, back to Squatel. There are cards that you can utilize to boost. War Dancer is a Squatel Elf, which is three strength, four provisions, damage a unit by one. If this unit is boosted, damage a unit by three. Um, Obviously, if you play All God and you put it on a War Dancer and you draw the War Dancer later, it's going to be five strength, deal three damage. That's an eight, uh, eight point play when you play the card. That's a pretty good top deck. Um, so you get to enhance cards like that. Maybe we can play uh, Hand Buff Squatel. One of the problems with Hand Buff Squatel is cards like War Dancer are pretty bad. If you play your Hand Buff cards, 
and then you draw the war dancers later on. Let's say you're playing Sursa and Ithlin, you play Sursa and Ithlin in round one, and you don't hit a war dancer, and you draw the war dancer in round three. It's a terrible top deck, four four value top deck. If you're playing all god, it goes to eight value, so considerably considerably better. Uh, you have cards like Skags, you have cards like uh, Aglace. Granted, both of these cards are pretty bad, but who knows? Uh, maybe this card pushes that archetype. I really hope it does. Um, actually, I shouldn't say maybe. It'll definitely push that archetype and make that archetype better. Is that archetype going to be good enough to see play? I don't know. Uh, if it's not good enough, this expansion, maybe another one to two expansions from now, we get some more hand buff synergistic cards for Squiatel. And maybe hand buff Squiatel will be good in the future. We'll see. This card definitely helps it. Not to mention the other uses of this card. Any any card that can utilize boost um, on a high value order or engine card can utilize this. So for example, uh, Nilfgaard. We play cards like um, Damien and Stefan. Uh, you use this with like uh, formation. You boost it by two to seven to play around removal. Well, if you play all God, you can just boost it to seven, not play formation, and you get to utilize these cards at a higher uh, strength value so that they're less likely to get removed. You can also use it with Northern Realms. So Northern Realms, you have cards with formation. Well, if you play all God and you put this on something like Prince and Sace, uh, you get to play the Prince at six on play. You don't have to utilize a leader. You don't have to do any kind of buffing on board. You can just play it as a six, hit a six, 12 value right there. Uh, obviously, if you buff it, it gets bigger. Um, you can play this with any formation card. Uh, if you really wanted to, there might actually be a scenario where you can use this to like set up um, Alzer's double cross. Let's say you have two units in your deck that are eight strength and you want to Alzer's double cross one, one of those particular two units. Well, you can play all God, boost the eight to a 10 and then boost two other units. And then when you play Alzer's double cross, you'll guarantee pull out the 10. Uh, you could do this with marching orders. So yeah, maybe you can set up some consistency there with all God. Uh, but once again, it is a neutral card, which means no devotion in your deck. And if you play this in round three, really, really bad. So you're going to want to be playing this with a card like uh, Oniromancy. Um, is this card good? I don't know. I, I think it has potential. Um, will it be good enough to push a deck into like tier two, tier one viability? We'll have to see. Uh, more cards are coming. Um, but yes, I'm very excited about this card. And that is about it for us today. Um, roughly like 30-ish cards. I believe there's something like 70 cards this expansion. So uh, more than a third, less than a half. Um, we, we did review a couple tokens, so those I suppose don't count. Um, we'll be doing another card review uh, a little later. I think I like this better, doing a large chunk of a review all at once just because... Um, it's easier for me instead of doing like a couple cards a day. Uh, it's also easier for you guys to um, take it all in. So I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Let me know in the comments what card you're lo most looking forward to. And I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.